the thing is when you're on a film set and you're filming you only need the cast members there that are important to the scene you don't need the entire cast there and that becomes a very serious error in simulation that they have done throughout the six missions because if you realize that those three buddies if they were on the lunar surface right and one of them is in orbit and you can communicate for maybe a half an hour on each orbit around the first thing he's going to be doing as soon as they come back into audio contact with each other is they're going to be updating each other they're going to be all excited how are you doing they're going to go through if there's any problems because if there's any problems with the equipment they're going to have to get the hell out of there as quickly as possible and there's a hell of a lot of timing involved for them to take off from the surface to get back up into orbit to reconnect all of that stuff would be happening that communication would be happening with Houston as well and none of that communication is there right and of course just being the buddy that's on board the command module every time he comes around the first thing he's going to do is check with those guys down there on the ground say everything's okay everything's this what the hell's going on how is it down there they're going to want him to describe it right everything else and don't forget they were considered to be professionals and the first thing they'd be doing would be going through a checklist to make sure everything is a-okay just in case they had to cut the trip short none of that is there as a matter of fact there's no communication between them even when they're there for three days that kind of communication is not in there that is a complete error in simulation when they were doing the script that's the very first thing that you're going to see in there there's a private transcript going on or a communication going on just with the command module that isn't part of their program on there and then the next part of the simulation which is even more difficult would be the simulation of the liftoff and then the the docking of the two spacecrafts in there and of course if you read all the documentation from their payload specialists and what the uh, interior cue cards were doing in their instructions that are on there after they lift it off, even if they had something like the OPS pack, which some of the missions do, some of them don't. Some of them just left them on the surface, other ones do. It's not necessarily defined when you're reading the documents, but the instructions are, after they redock, were to lighten the load as much as possible, and that includes part of their suits, their helmets, their boots, their gloves are distinctly left behind there, the OPS packs anything else to lighten the load. Of course, they're not taking extra cameras, only the cameras in magazines. And then when you get to Apollo 17, now you have a, a spacewalk to recover the film canister out there. But first of all, those camera lenses were covered. They would have to have a spacewalk to first take the covers off the, the lenses of the cameras. There's three cameras out there and the one camera has 17 film canisters attached to it and listed for photography on it. Those can't be done automatically. A human would have to do it. The other thing you're gonna see when you're watching that spacewalk where he's retrieving the film canister, his suit that he is wearing is nothing more than a nylon suit on there. It doesn't even have a zipper on the back of it. It looks more like a dive suit, like they're shooting it underwater. And in addition, the command module pilot does not have an abrasion cover on his helmet. Okay, he doesn't have the foil shield and he doesn't have the abrasion cover on it. He just has the bubble helmet. And you can see that in the various photographs. Apollo 11's classic on that with Collins. His helmet's quite a bit different on it. All of the missions are like that because those additional weight on those helmets the payload specialists were trying to get everything down to a minimum to remove that extra couple of pounds of weight off of suit was very very important to them to do that and I don't see anywhere where they change the suit specifically for that spacewalk the helmets are designed for each person if they left part of their suit in the lamp which they are instructed to do then they couldn't depressurize because they wouldn't be able to be in a uh, suit themselves the other two guys wouldn't be there 
and yet there they are and it's, so it's a complete error in simulation because they have more equipment on board than what they're supposed to have and they have different equipment on board than anything else that they had and that entire suit for Evans is a complete different suit it does not have the zipper up the back. It doesn't have any of the other attachments on there from an EVA suit. That's just a couple of little things in there. But having 17 film canisters on the external bay, the film covers are still on the cameras in every shot, every photograph you see of them. The camera lenses are covered. So the cameras are running the entire time from lift off off. They are not in a pressurized container. Those cameras, they have to go through a launch. Okay, there's no radiation protection on them because they're on the outside of the craft. They went for three days traveling to the moon through the Van Allen belts. Those cameras wouldn't stand up to any of that. The film wouldn't stand the vacuum and the radiation would just, just absolutely destroy them. And there's absolutely no protection from those. Just another error in simulation. There are so many errors in simulations, these guys can't possibly keep up to them all. This is where the problem is with it. And the more things they bring up to try and defend it, they just open up another can of worms that they hadn't thought about because when they did it the first time, it wasn't thought about it, so it wasn't recorded. And when they try to bring it up and defend it, it just opens up another thing. It's like, here's the spacewalk, here's the thing. Yeah, but there's 17 film canisters out there. You're gonna tell me that it was done robotically that they changed those cameras up? that they turn them on and off, that they focus them. I mean, they could probably preset the focus to infinity, right? And get the focus that way. All of those details weren't thought about because there are far too many details that have to happen that they couldn't possibly think about when they were trying to, to do a simulation on the surface. And that's the same as Neil Armstrong's suit. They have displays that have images, you know, Apollo Alta Vista, or whatever his name is, has got little diagrams on what the actual so-called space suit is, right? But when they were practicing on Earth and what they did for the simulation on Earth, those suits had to be super lightweight. They can't run around with a 180 pound pack. They couldn't go out and practice with that. Well, guess what? That's the same suit you see that's now been in a museum for 50 years and there's no way they can change that out. It doesn't have the interior, it doesn't have the inner bladder in it, it doesn't have anything. There are quick connects for the gloves and the helmet. The boots are zippered in and there is no other suit inside that suit. Everything is on display and it's been there for 50 years and they can't alter that now. The upper in the OPS, there was two round tanks. One was the purge tank and the other one was the oxygen tank, pure oxygen and it was pressurized to 5,500 PSI. And the other thing that I forgot to mention is, is that the door handle, the emergency door handle, to get back in the uh, command module, if you couldn't dock properly, or the, say, the uh, astronaut inside the command module was disabled in any way or unconscious, you name it, whatever, on the thing, the emergency door handle is on the descent stage of the engine in um, quadrant four. And there would have to be in a transcript, Houston would be reminding them to make sure that they had that with them. There, there would be something in a transcript somewhere to go through a checklist to make sure they had everything before they took off from the surface of the moon. But that would be included. They'd be asking, do you have that? And that's not mentioned either. And they, there's no way they could get inside that outside door on the command module if they couldn't dock, if they had to do a spacewalk to do that without that tool. And if the guy inside doesn't have the ability to open that hatch for you and depressurize it, you're just going to be floating around in space. All of those things are just errors in simulation. And if they had the detail in there and they knew they had that equipment to do it, there would be somebody sitting at Houston making sure that they had that on board. There'd be a conversation about that. And the fact of the matter is there is no conversation on any of that. The amount of timing that it would take for the liftoff while that thing is orbiting around because it only has so much fuel to get up there. They would have to make it. It's a 
it's like throwing a baseball across the plate and you want it down to be low on the outside there and it, you only get one shot to do it right they only needed the actors on the set for the scene that they're shooting that's why there's no conversation that's the same as when they go back into the lem the scene is finished there's nothing happening there's no transcript they should be talking they have to get out of their suits they have to get this thing properly repressurized back up get it all fired up and working again there's no conversations about that then they're going to have a little nap right but all of that's missing because when they were finished shooting outside the cameras were turned off and they went home for the night or back to the hotel suite that's what's happening and that's why i said there's so many details that are missing in there these guys can't possibly catch them all and some of them are just so embarrassing they won't even bring it up it was that cheaply and that quickly made don't forget they didn't have a whole lot of time to put this together the main focus that they had and they had to make it work good for the big show was to get a saturn V rocket off the ground and when you really look at it that way like that's a big focus to, that's a huge challenge to do that to make that thing work and get it to lift off everything else you see is basically an afterthought they don't even replace the the equipment that they were practicing with at flagstaff it's the same stuff you see in the footage because it was all shot at flagstaff they didn't even replace the equipment it's been out there it's got mold on it. it's got everything else it's got rained on the flag is wet the water running down the windows right they had to put a rain guard on it because there's a leak in the window right the stuff is sitting outside. They practice, you know, 16, 18 months for each mission. So that stuff could be out there two and a half, three years. It's all bleached. The foils curled up and cracked on the, the stuff. I mean, they're using uh, oil filters off of cars to wrap the some plastic foil around it just to simulate the ribbon cable that was going out there. They just stick a screw in the side of a frame to attach it. There's nothing behind it. The central station is just a a simple aluminum uh, shelf thing, right, with a couple of wires on it and some foil on it. There's nothing inside. There's no equipment inside. Can't possibly work because it's just a mock-up. Well, the LEM is exactly the same way. It doesn't have anything inside that piece of equipment. And the other inside shots are being shot from one of their simulators. And that's when you can have a girl in a bikini show up they had enough of the communications on it right don't forget how many planes and ships they had in the air when that thing took off right to fiddle a communication around right? they can make it come from anywhere at any given time right plus it's relayed so many times who the hell knows where it's coming from when you receive the signal right when you look at the signal it's going from sydney to california to houston right three main signals off of there and then when they're flying around in orbit they've got stuff coming up from Alaska all of that stuff they can fiddle with they can throw out the old documents they can regenerate new ones if somebody comes up and says oh that wouldn't work this way and that and that's what people have done with all that stuff they just throw it away they just get rid of the encyclopedias and they put brand new ones in with different information and the only ones that they can't do is the information that people bought books that they bought that are sitting in their houses somewhere but those are three generations away now and nobody's going to go find them and look them up right to see what the difference is and nasa is continuously generating documentation after documentation and they do it deliberately just to confuse people they put more than one pdf file out and each one makes it seem different in each one and when you compare them then they keep the ar actual argument going and it's good for them because of more, it's like free advertising. I forget how many years it took for them to respond to the Sea Rock and regenerate an excuse saying it was an Amish or whatever, right? And, oh well, that wasn't the original scan, that was a copy of a copy of a copy. They, they make all kinds of excuses up for it and remove it and then they even remove it, the original image from the journal site so you can't see it anymore right well I'm waiting for them to do the wet flag unfortunately that wet flag is on corporation walls have been reproduced it's in their museums right 
it's in hardback books, it's in encyclopedias, it's all over the place, it's in magazines that were produced at the time, right? Plus the images all over the internet. When I started scanning them and putting them up, the biggest job was running the equipment to run the scans. They were not analyzing each photograph to see if there was anything in it. And if you take a look and you see the fact that at the end of the Second World War, all of those plants that were modified and put into production to produce military equipment, automotive shops and everything else were turned back into now producing cars again. All of that equipment was simply thrown out and buried. They did not recycle metal. Like they did some, but most of it they didn't bother with. They just took it out and buried it. But all of these plants that were turned into manufactured military equipment, okay? The equipment, everything was thrown out of those buildings and they put the brand new stuff in there because they're now gonna produce something else. The war is over, right? They just took it out of there. And Flagstaff was a military base to start with. It's got the universities there, it has it had all the technology crap running around for the war to start with was being produced there. And now all of a sudden it's going in and NASA took over the facility. The dump site is there, yet it's been in service forever on the thing. And that's why you see so much stuff sticking out of the ground. But when you really look at what the astronauts are doing, if you follow how they do it, they, the way they photograph it, they show you three or four shots and you think, why would you take that many photographs of the stupid rock? And you realize that there's something in there, then they've stuck in and they've uncovered it a little bit and then possibly even removed it. And if you just shoot back and forth in the three photographs, you'll see the piece that is now missing from the rock. And you go back and you look at the, the one where it's uncovered and there it is sitting there, what they wanted to show you. And other times they pick it up, they actually pick it up with the tongs and hold it up for you to see it. And if, they, if it's still left on the ground, they use the gnome to mark the location of where it is. They're pointing it out using the, the gnome. If they're shooting over top of one of their tools, they're using the tool to point it out or they laid the tool down like the one that mound where the glove is buried in the dirt right and you can just see the fingers sticking out of it and stuff well you can see more now you can see the pure white glove on there but they laid the tool down so that the shadow makes it narrow and points right to it it's quite intentional and when you take five shots of it in a row on a very simple thing where there's just one individual shots they themselves are actually pointing that stuff out for you to see. But the other errors that, that happen in the simulation is you have people walking around on the set and they can be in places on the set or in a position that they couldn't possibly be. And I'm not just talking about the agility that they have. I have the diagrams on on the actual movement, how far they can reach up and down, how far they can bend, right? And of course, when you see the videos, I mean, in a pressurized suit, they couldn't be bouncing and jumping and kneeling and stuff like that. They'll claim that they have something that's got enough power to do that. But it's gonna take probably an hour, let's say even an hour would be reasonable. First, they gotta take them off, get out of the suits. Then they gotta start cleaning these things up Right? They got to get rid of all the crap and dirt and everything off them because they're not going to be able to make a seal to put the water in and the oxygen back in those things at that kind of high pressure if they can't make those seals work. So they're going to take time. They're going to have to clean up those connections if they're making them. Then they're going to charge them up. And there again, there's no transcript. There's no communication. There's no audio file. There's nothing. When they go inside that lamp, that's it. They're finished the scene, so there is no communication. And they so-called do all of that stuff, and it's simply missing. It's a huge error. It's a huge gap in what should be happening. Houston should be talking to them the whole time. They should be going through the instructions. They should be going through a checklist to put that thing back together and make sure the battery is tested. You can't be out there without uh, battery powers to, that are running the, the cooling pumps and the fans inside that suit. 
you got to know, you got to, you want to make sure that battery's at a hundred percent. You probably would want to confirm that with Houston before you jump in that suit again, right? That everything is properly connected. There'd be a whole communication while they are regenerating those PLSS packs. That didn't happen. Wasn't part of the simulation. So they don't have any transcripts. They don't have any audio file on it. And of course they never had a video inside the machine. Why not? Even in Apollo 11, they have a full color camera inside the craft and it's in the photograph. But don't forget that color camera, even if it was so-called belonged to the to the command module, was not used at any time to record anything while the two guys were on the surface. Simply because they were not part of the, the cast that are being filmed in the simulation. The guy up there, he just wasn't called onto the set. You only need the cast to shoot the scene that you're shooting. And that's why you don't hear the audio of it. And that's why you don't see any video of it. And they can create all kinds of transcripts to say that that guy is talking to Houston all day long. Did not happen. Like I said, there's so much detail that would have to go into do a full simulation and not miss any little detail. Like it's the devil is in the details, right? They miss so much. Just huge gaps in stuff that should have been happening. And basically the communication between people on the ground and people in the craft above. I mean, these guys were buddies. They live next door. Their, their kids and wives hung out together, right? They go to birthday parties together, the whole nine yards, and they did it for years. And here they are. You're not going to talk to that guy. Your lives are in danger. You're not going to check in and say, hey, how's it going down there? You're not interested enough to say, hey, what did you find? <laughs> or go uh, check in to say, are you guys still alive? Because if not, I'm going to take off home. I'm just hanging. I'm not going to sit here and do any more orbits. I might as well take off, right? <laughs> the guys on the ground are dead. There's no sense him orbiting. Guy in the command module is dead, and the guys on the ground are going to go, well, we better get our ass together and get back up there, find our way into that craft, and try and find our way home. They're not going to hang around either, right? Because whatever killed the guy in the command module, right? They got to sort that out before they can before they can get home too, right? They don't know if it's still functioning, and I think the guys on the ground would want to know that. I guarantee you, they want to know it, and they'd be talking to their buddy all the time about every little detail of stuff that they're. All three would be talking continuously while they have the available communication. That's not in any of the videos. That's not in any, any of the transcripts of the three guys. They can say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll make up a bunch of transcript for him talking to Houston now. They can generate that in a heartbeat. I'm sure they got a, a computer that can auto generate stuff between them and Houston and put 10 hours of transcript out anytime they want, right? And the, the very obvious images that I produce out there People don't even want to tackle them. They simply don't want to tackle them. that. Like that huge error with Buzz coming out of there up against the door when he can't possibly be anywhere near it. If that was equipped inside, if it was fully equipped inside, he wouldn't be anywhere near that door. And nobody can tackle that because that shows you clearly that that's just a mock-up. It's just a, a simple shell. There's nothing inside that. They just needed a stand to put a ladder to come down to shoot the video, right? Too lazy to even put a handle on the door. I mean, Christ. And then you look at the antennas, they're just laying, they're pointing at the ground. They're, uh, and if they're pointing at the ground, then they're not in communication with Houston. So once again, and you'll see that in all of them, uh, 11 and 12 uh, are really bad for that because the antennas are just pointing at the ground. Uh, those kind of things and everything then falls into place the double shadows because of the, they're adjusting the lighting all of that stuff falls into place and just because there's two panes on a window isn't going to create that shadow because then every uh, photograph taken out the window is going to be doubled up it'll look like a double image if it's doing that to a shadow it'll be every photograph taken out the window for 
all of the missions if the windows were causing that kind of a problem with the photography. Uh, I mean, these guys are quite creative to make that up, to uh, think of those things, right? When they make a statement about one thing, then something else comes into play, okay? And it comes back and bites them in the ass, and they've been doing that forever. Like I said, he brings up Evans doing his moon, his spacewalker, right? Well, he's got the wrong equipment on. I mean, just complete error and simulation. Those things are going to bite them all the time, and there's no way they can respond to it. What we've got is we've got this lovely story about Cernan and his backpack, his OPS pack, to keep it either as a souvenir or a memento or something, that because it was going to be left on the lunar surface, he took the abrasion cover with him. And this story came out after he died because they claimed they found it in his house after he died. That's the whole story on the thing. Now we got a problem. We've got a video showing a spacewalk with a OPS pack on it. And that's the only instance you see it. So, if the OPS packs came back up onto the command module, then the story about Cernan is just made up. So now it's in the video. So now you've got a simulation error because they've added a piece of equipment that so-called, with all the other documents, say that it's either left in the ascent module and sent back or was actually ejected on the surface. There's the problem there. So now, if he wants to be correct, the OPS packs are in the command module, now they return to Earth, and now we have to wind the clock back 50 years and put the OPS packs in the museums as part of the suit. They should be on display as the suit. Just over the fact that they added one piece of equipment when they were doing a simulation.